Hello and uh, welcome to a brand new episode of ET Markets PMS Talk, a show where we discuss the opportunities as well as investment strategies deployed by the fund manager in the popular space of ultra HNI investing. Well, my name is Shadha Jananda and today we have with us a very special guest uh, who is Naisa Shah, who is a managing partner equities at Trudent Asset Management, who is managing AUM of uh, around about 122 crores. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Shah. Hello, Shadi. Well, Mr. Shah, let me quickly come to the strategy, the multi-cap strategy. In fact, uh, it has given impressive returns since inception, approximately doubled uh, when compared to the benchmark index. Now, if someone would have invested, let's say, 50 lakh at the start of the fund, how much money would have uh, the person made? Yeah, so, so we just started the strategy uh, in third week of March. And, uh, you know, though it's a very, uh, you know, just we're just looking at maybe, let's say, three months, three months, three and three and a half months, seven period. Right. Somebody would have invested at the inception 50 lakh, uh, you know, maybe as of yesterday and as of 12 July, that would have become roughly about 64 lakhs. Right. In fact, uh, you know, we are seeing uh, quite a bit of action in uh, the markets as well. What is your take on the market amid the global interest rate uh, headwinds that we're seeing? Yeah. So if you look at, uh, you know, on the interest rate side, so let's come to inflation first. So yesterday, uh, US inflation, the print came in at, uh, Three uh, percent, which which was at uh, old, uh, which was at low since March twenty one. Was mm-hmm. since that we have even seen an interest inflation of nine percent sometime in CY twenty two, right. which was at forty year high. So from a forty year high of nine percent yesterday, we saw three percent, which was at uh, you know eighteen month kind of low, right? So it seems that you know US interest rate has picked out inflation. Inflation numbers are uh, you know better. And in India also, it seems that interest rates have picked out. We could be in an extended period of pause or something like that, but it seems that interest rate has picked out. So interest rates, which was a worry for last 18 months or so, for the most of the CY22 and early part of CY23, that seems to be no longer a headwind. And hence, uh, you know, so that's no longer a very headwind. So now you track earning growth, how, you know, how uh, we are trading it uh, in terms of valuation vis-a-vis the earning growth that Indian companies or Nifty were to offer. So if you look at uh, on the earnings front, FY23, we saw Nifty earnings growth of about 11% on the back of 32% growth in uh, FY22. Okay. And this year as well, we expect earnings growth to be about uh, 13 to 15% for the year as a whole. So uh, on a tw- FY24 basis, Nifty is roughly trading at about 20 times, uh, which is slightly above long-term average, but it's not you know a very euphoric zone or significantly overvalued. So we are okay in terms of valuation. So we broadly now, you know, track earnings growth. And then, of, of course, you have individual companies which could grow earnings faster than Nifty and, you yeah. know, uh, have superior earnings growth profile. So it's, it'll be broadly bottom-up stock, uh, stock-specific stock approach that I think market would reward that approach in our view. Right. In fact, uh, uh, Mr. Shah, can you also take us through investing style and how do you manage uh, risk in the fund? On, on the investing, uh, you know, we use a combination of top-down and bottom-up approach. Top-down approach just to see, uh, you know, which are the industries which are favorably placed where you see headwinds and uh, tailwinds in the near, near to medium terms, right? So that's how you uh, you assess the industry characteristics in terms of growth profile, uh, growth profile, the profit pool, the, and then you have individual companies within sector which are going ahead of the sectors and, you know, and then have a superior uh, earnings growth profile, uh, capital effi- uh, higher capital efficiency, along with good management, right? So you study various companies within that sector and then uh, based on finally uh, look at the valuation and where you're comfort on valuation, looking at risk reward. Mm-hmm. And then you pick individual stocks in the portfolio across industry sectors and, you know, and construct a diversified, uh, diversified portfolio. So that's broadly the... Uh, uh, approach that we follow and on the risk front uh, you know we, we we keep a diversified portfolio across large cap mid cap and small cap uh, across so it's a multi-cap portfolio right and we do not take uh, very high exposure to smaller names by smaller names i mean uh, mm-hmm. smaller names in terms of market cap right so we tend to have uh, slightly more a uh, few more rather few names in small cap micro cap space just to diversify this so, not to, so just to avoid the concentration part of our illiquidity part of the risk, right? So we keep a diversified portfolio and, you know, since it's a multi-cap, uh, you know, we, uh, the risk is not that high compared to versus uh, or a volatile versus, a, let's say, a very uh, purely a small cap or a micro cap kind of portfolio. So it's a very diversified portfolio and we manage allocations based on liquidity and the, mm. the size of the company. So, and we look at margin of safety in terms of valuation. So diversified portfolio uh, takes care of uh, the risk aspect to a large extent. 
Right. In fact, you mentioned multi-cap. Wanted to understand uh, uh, from you, the smaller the mid-cap space does look interesting at this point in time. In fact, uh, you know, in touch, uh, fresh record highs recently. So what is your take uh, on the space for the next, uh, let's say, 6 to 12 months? I mean, next 6 to 12 months will be very difficult to call out, but uh, medium to long term, you know, yeah. this space uh, uh, will do well. If you look at, okay. see, while there is euphoria in the market, you can say in small cap, uh, but if you look at the March, you know, March was very bad for small cap, micro cap names, right? Yes. So we have come, we have seen good uh, move from the March lows, but as of June and let's say, if, even if you have to look at last five years, uh, mm. so Nifty had done about 12.4% CAGR last five years. Mm. Mid cap index was about 154 and small cap was about 8.69% kind of. So five year ended June small cap index had still underperformed mid cap and large cap. While we are looking at near term it's done well and all that, but on a five year basis, they had still underperformed the other two indices, right? right. And, uh, and if you look at that, it's, we call it a small cap, but of course you have to look at the individual companies mm. within that, right? So you could still have... Uh, uh, you know, companies which are doing well, differentiated product profile, earning growth, balance sheet and all that. So ideally, one should uh, look at the business model, promoter, pay degree, valuation and all that and then mm. decide rather than just put it under a, you know, uh, just a small cap kind of bucket and say whether this company or this stock will do well or not. So you have to assess it mm. on a bottom up on the merit of each company and then see whether it makes sense for you to own it or not. But yeah, of course, as I said, from mass lows, uh, you know, small cap index had done well, but mm. if one has to uh, see, there could be correction anytime. I mean, it's very difficult call with the market small cap in no, like eight ten percent. Right. But yeah. medium to long term, uh, you know, since they're coming on a very low, uh, I mean, on a low base, earning growth could be significantly higher uh, compared okay. to other categories. And if earning growth management and all those factors are in place, and then as a space, they they tend they, they could do well over medium to long term. All right. Also, Mr. Tell us uh, how do you pick stocks for the portfolio, and tell us about your viable investment approach. So, especially as I said, we follow a combination of top-down and uh, bottom-up approach uh, yeah. and we keep a diversified portfolio. So, when I say mm -hmm. viable, not in that order, but let's say in the industry, so innovating industry or where the industry has to make sense for us in terms of investing, uh, should have, a, uh, you know, very low terminal risk and, you know, uh, product and uh, products and services, which are, you know, uh, uh, acceptable uh, to, to other people. So innovation or, you know, maybe you can send new products or the new categories, companies could be expanding into newer segments. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, authority in terms of governance, uh, obviously, uh, you mm. look at the promoter or the promoter pedigree about the companies who are driving the business. Okay, business metrics in terms of uh, growth profile, capital efficiencies mm. and all that. And low meaning low leverage, earnings consistency or the earning growth and we stands for valuation. Okay. So if all of this makes sense, of course, one then still has to look at valuation, whether you are pay, uh, overpaying too much for the growth mm. that you expect coming to deliver or it's not being priced in or it's not being well understood by the market. So that is broadly the philosophy that we follow while constructing the portfolio. Absolutely. And I was just going through the fact sheet uh, as well, Mr. Chow. So what makes you so optimistic about financials, consumer durables, as well as auto actually sectors? So if you look at financials, uh, you know, we expect credit growth to remain very strong. The mm -hmm. latest print is about 15% YOY credit growth uh, and uh, driven mainly by SME and retail segments, you know. Uh, so we expect credit growth to remain strong. And uh, if you look at the asset quality growth and PS and net and PS are at multi-year low, mm -hmm. credit quality uh, is under uh, is very good, you know, so credit cost will be under check. So, uh, uh, while means can moderate from elevated levels of FY23, but we still expect pre-provisioning profit growth will still be very strong. And that along with muted credit costs or the low, uh, you know, credit uh, loan loss provisioning, okay, that would still mean uh, banking sector would still show very healthy earning growth. And mm. if you look at the valuations on the private side, they are still broadly in line with the long-term averages, you know, uh, sectors done well, but valuations are still in line with long-term averages. So, we expect banking sector to do well. Uh, coming to consum consumer discretionary side, uh, you know, uh, uh, India, India is just about, let's say, $2,300 GDP per capita. And when you look at, uh, let's say, other emerging or other countries and on maybe look at, say, China, when they move from $2,000 per capita to $5,000, various con discretionary consumption categories, they had grown anywhere between 17 to 25% for a considerable period of time. So we are right. just at the threshold of that. So we, we feel consumer discretionary uh, uh, categories, uh, you know, will show a very good growth in the medium term. 
and hence uh, you know we are bullish on uh, on that segment. Right. Any recent entry or exit? Huh. On, on the auto component side, you know, India is one of the top five auto markets, uh, you know, in the world. And after COVID, we have seen good recovery. Uh, so two-wheeler domestic has started doing well. Passenger vehicle had a uh, very good FI22 and FI23. So passenger vehicles would slightly show muted growth compared to 23, but two-wheeler is recovery. And tractors, tractors will show muted growth and CV will also show muted growth. But mm. uh, no, you still have a lot of potential when it comes to auto OEM strength. And of course, when the auto segment does well, and then your auto component sector does well, then you have mm. uh, replacement market opportunity as well as export opportunity. So, China plus one, China is a very large uh, exporter of auto component, uh, you yes. know, uh, products. So we feel that even in India, you know, the China plus one thesis uh, playing out, Indian auto component industry is a significant uh, export opportunity, and and that's going to do well uh, uh, particularly. Okay, cool. Uh, also wanted to understand any recent entry or exit that you've made in the fund recently? So, uh, so we just started this portfolio in March, uh, mm. but just in terms of a few uh, entries, uh, so we have added CDSL, uh, which is a capital market play, you know, uh, you know demand penetration and uh, you know participation by individuals, that remains very So we see a structural long opportunity. Cash market volumes, if you see last few months, they they revived from FI23 lows, right? And uh, stock, it's a new call, uh, uh, and it trades roughly about 33 times FI24. So we are bullish on that, and it's being our latest, uh, uh, you know, addition to the portfolio. The other one being Electronic Smart India Limited. Hmm. Uh, it's the largest uh, consumer durable retailer in EP and Telangana. And uh, Navi is expanding into North, adding, uh, you know, a few stores in NCR and all that. And... Consumer durable retail again is a, is a very large opportunity considering the penetration levels of across all categories. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's a very efficient retail player and it roughly takes at about 27, 28 times at 24. So we have used that name. So these are the uh, broadly two editions uh, that we have made recently. Right. Well, on that note, uh, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Shah. And that's all for now. But do stay log on to etmarkets.com for more on news, business, and economy. Thank you so much for your time. Sir.